All right, so what we got here? We have a uh, desktop APC UPS. It's a uh, 13, 1300 watt. Um, this was taken out of service because uh wasn't working. Uh, it wasn't keeping backup power. Um, guy tried to replace the battery. That didn't that didn't work. Um, it was still having issues. So to duplicate the problem, <clears throat> so we can see about fixing it, um, we have the UPS plugged into a power strip just so I can click the uh, power off and on or on and off while um, while it's still plugged in. Uh, this is the readout screen where it'll tell you uh, stats about the UPS's operation. Down here we have a uh, Juniper rack mount switch. Um, fan comes on and uh, it's basically just there to tell us that uh, that the UPS is operating. So <clears throat> we'll show uh, some of the issues. So we'll power it on. it up so you can hear that come on so what do we got we have a flashing battery indicator and now it says it's it has a little bit come on focus focus yeah, good enough um you know event zero estimated runtime in minutes 11 so we're pulling <clears throat> a little, little shy of 60 watts from it right now there's a little bit of battery uh, I've, I've test I've taken the battery out and I've tested it. it's at full 24 volts so um, it should be good there load it's pretty low I'm trying to get us in focus here um, so now We'll kill the power. Let's see what she does. See? That thing is not happy. You heard the, uh, heard the fans spin down. It was getting some surging power. <clears throat> so, not happy. We're going to have to figure this out. So we flipped it upside down. We're going to uh, take the batteries out. Um, it's two 12 volts connected in uh, series. So uh, give it 24 volts. Um, we'll take that out, check the batteries, and see what it do. Took the battery out. Got it connected up here, and we're getting pretty solid 24 volts. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that's 24 volt compatible to uh, to put as a load directly on the battery besides this UPS. So uh, I guess we'll have to figure out how to test that battery. But the battery is brand new, so we have to we'll, we'll assume that it's good for now. Um, and then those are the connections down there, and this battery literally just slides down in there like that um, so we'll start tearing into the UPS and uh, we'll see if we can see any skid marks or any uh, telltale signs of um, some failure so we about nine screws um, six on the back we had um, to uh, use a bit unnecessary force to take the, uh, take the front off um, but it all just pried off. There was run one ribbon cable connecting that uh, and then there was one screw hiding down there and there was one screw hiding in here. This is under the battery compartment and then so that the back the back comes off with those first six screws and then we, uh, we take the lid off and we can see the battery compartment uh, has two connections right there so we'll go ahead and disconnect those and then we'll get into the meter and start going over stuff so it looks like we got some pretty um, <clears throat> reasonably thick cables 
for um, for the battery compartment. So let's see, we have this is the back panel right here, and then so this is the this is the battery backup rail. This is the surge only rail. I can tell if there's anything. Got a nice beefy transformer there. Um, so I guess that means this is a uh, pure sine wave inverter. So I've poured over the board. Um, not really able to find anything, um, any sort of busted MOSFETs or leaky caps or bulging caps. Um, no, no smoke or anything. The one thing I did see is this little guy here. Now, when everything's together, this is right next to the battery compartment. Um, or this, this, there's actually a little window in the battery compartment to look at that. So, if we look at the battery compartment, so this little, this little window here, my finger is, that actually fits right over the, um, that little thing. So, what, now, nah, I haven't been able to confirm this, but it wouldn't surprise me if this was some sort of temperature sensor. Uh, and if those batteries got really hot during charging, that temperature sensor could trip and possibly, um, I don't know, gum up the works. Or maybe the temperature sensor is not working correctly um, after it got tripped. So I tested it out, and I put the meter in diode check just to see if there's connectivity between these two contacts on the connector. Um, so if you see there, you can see the little contacts. And then on this side, a little closer, you can see, come on, there we go. You can see uh, this little thing is potted in something. It's a little brass connector. WST Whiskey Sierra Tango. Um, and it's potted with something. So, to me, that suggests there's some sort of a sensor in here. Um, if that's the case, it may have failed because there's no connectivity between these two wires. Now, I'm no expert. I don't know if that's supposed to, how it's supposed to work or not. Um, but, um, this UPS is otherwise broken, so, um, just for the sake of troubleshooting, we'll, um, maybe we'll just bypass it. Just bypass that sensor, and then, um, we'll see if it works. And then if it does work, we'll need to see about replacing this sensor. Some sort of a thermal sensor, I guess. Um... I'll probably also try to look in the computer and see if there's any, if I can find any info on this. Alright, so I lopped off the uh, potential offending sensor and soldered on a big tumor right there. Joined these two wires, uh, did the diode check thing, make sure we got connectivity between these two, um, between these two connections, and, um, I guess now we're gonna sew the patient back up and um, see if it lets the smoke out even worse than it did, or um, maybe it works. Maybe we salvaged something. So uh, you will notice some automotive blade type fuses here. I did check these. Both of these are good. They're soldered into the motherboard, but they're uh, okay. I got connection between this. And this post and this post and that post and that post. So those are good. So we'll uh, snap it all back together and see if it works. All right, we got about uh, an eighth of a beer left, and uh, she's mostly back together. Got the um, the loud juniper hooked back up in power. 
Got it hooked up to the power switch. Um, temp the potential temperature sensor is bypassed. Um, I didn't plug this back. I didn't hook this back up because, uh, well, I mean, I hooked up the the front panel because this is where the power button is. But I didn't click it in there because this is a pain. If I need to take it off again, um, that's gonna make me angry. Um, so now what we'll do, we'll kick it on. Got the uh, Got the fire extinguisher in within reach just in case things get a little too spicy. So we're gonna click it on, clickety clack. Gonna... Oh shit! F O seven C manual. All right, we're gonna to shut that off. Oh my god, go off. Alright, clearly it didn't like bypassing that temperature sensor, so back to the drawing board it is. Well, 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 looky here, system fault. Foxtrot 07, temperature. So, that was a temperature sensor, but maybe its normal state is not, uh, or is disconnected? Let's cut the temperature sensor to where there's nothing going through see if we still get the same error all right thankfully APC gives us a nice little window to um, get into the get at the temperature sensor uh, in the battery compartment so uh, snip the tip and um, broke the connection let's see what to do now contact clickety clack Yep. Yep, still the F07. Okay, so maybe that temperature sensor was good. Tell us your secrets. So I got the thermal. Um sensor back together and I should correct myself because all this time I've been saying temperature sensor um, which turns out is what this thing actually is uh, it is a temperature sensor a thermal sensor that tells the computer what um, what temperature um, this this whole operation is um, what I was under the assumption that this was, and what I meant to say this whole damn time, was thermal fuse. Uh, I, I meant to say thermal fuse. Um, now, I, I was completely wrong in assuming that it was a thermal fuse, but that's what I thought it was. I thought it was a thermal fuse that once it reaches uh, shutdown temperature, it open circ it goes open circuit and... Um, the whole works comes down. So I'm gonna get this back together and uh, see if we fixed anything. Um, now, no polarity was el uh, evident on each of these wires, so I just um, probably should have marked that before I took them apart. But eh, when you fly by the seat of your pants, that's what happens sometimes. So um, we'll see what it looks like when it gets put back together. All right, we're back uh, connected. Got everything back together for the most part except the front bezel here like we did last time got the uh, temperature sensor um, back hopefully connected uh, click clack see if we get an error alright so That's happy. Green lights and whatnot. Clearly there's no error. The manual that I found, or the, the website I showed earlier, was not... didn't have uh, really anything useful on it. Estimated runtime in minutes. 14. Can I get a voltage out? 24 volts out. Okay, um, we can check that. 
what we'll do is we'll let it charge up for a bit. We'll stick some multimeter probes in the um, the outlets, and then we'll watch what it says on there when we uh, when we cut the power. See if there's any weird fluctuations. So we'll do that next. All right, we got the got the probes in the back door here, and uh, got this on the front. So 120, 123.4 on the faceplate, or 123 on the faceplate, and then 123.454 and some change on the meter. <clears throat> so what we'll do. Um, we'll try to pay attention to what that thing sounds like when we're um, when we're cutting power, and uh, we'll watch the meter here. You can see that all right. Yeah, sorry about the lights. All right, there we go. 123.4. We're gonna hit it. Yeah, it nothing. It immediately crapped out. All right, well, turn it back on. Yeah. Interesting. So as we reach the halfway point of beer number two in this project, um, I have to say, I think I'm going to point a finger towards the battery again. Um, I know at the beginning we s I said that, um, I said that it's a uh, it's a new battery and it should be good. Um, um, I'm starting to point back to the, to the to the battery on this one. Hear me out. So we figured out this thing has uh, numerous little error codes that's going to show up if anything's funky. So if the um, if the output's bad, if uh, the input's bad. Um, if something on the board's not happy, there's there's a bunch of little error codes that this thing's going to show. It's not showing any of those. Um, now, I've had these battery packs apart before. Not not this particular one, right? Um, but I've, I've had some, some APC battery packs apart like this before. Battery is, is really weak and depletes its voltage really fast um, when the other one's just fine. So... Um, I think I might uh, crack this battery pack open and check each of the batteries um, because I can put a I can put a load on them when they're 12 volts um, and we'll see how each one behaves. That may be uh, video number two because this one's getting kind of long. So um, we're going to point back towards the battery pack on this one. Um, maybe APC sent a bad battery pack, but who knows, right? Um, so we'll see.